Hello, my name is Frederick Dean, and for the next few minutes, I want to talk to you about Work First. North Carolina's Work First program values families and communities. Work First allows parents to work and provide for their children. We are here to work with you to make your experience a successful one. In 1997, Work First ended the benefit of automatically receiving public assistance. The new emphasis became Working First. Every recipient of Work First became subject to a 60-month lifetime limit. In North Carolina, there is a 24-month time limit within that 60-month calendar. To start the application process, the first step is meeting with an intake specialist. Next, an applicant is required to sign a Mutual Responsibility Agreement, Part A and B. You will learn more about these documents and what they mean in your session with the specialist. The applicant must also complete a screening for substance abuse, and cooperate with child support enforcement. It is important to note that if the candidate is eligible to receive Work First benefits, they will not receive court-ordered child support payments. If the applicant does not comply with child support, the case head will lose Medicaid coverage and Work First benefits will terminate without any notice. Searching for a job is mandatory and must be ongoing while the application is pending. Be aware that child care is not provided during the application process. The applicant is required to register for work at the local Employment Security Commission office or online within five days of the date of application. Remember, there is a requirement to complete at least 35 hours of job search weekly and return timesheets once every two weeks. Once the application has been approved, then a notification will be sent by mail. The applicant is required to attend the Work First Employment Assessment meeting. In order to continue receiving Work First benefits, every applicant is expected to participate for a minimum of 35 hours weekly in an approved work or work-related activity. And here's what you want to know. The Work First benefit check will be received once the applicant has met all the requirements. Part A and B of the Mutual Responsibility Agreement, the MRA has been signed, and you have met with your employment social worker. If an applicant does not meet the requirements listed on the MRA core requirements and the MRA plan of action, the case will be terminated without any notice. Some other reasons for termination might include not registering for work with the ESC within five days of your application date, failure to complete and return timesheets, or failure to cooperate with child support enforcement. If an applicant quits a job without good cause or is dismissed from a job due to inappropriate behavior, Penalties are applicable. Those penalties are as follows. The applicant's family will be ineligible for Work First Family Assistance for a period of three months. The applicant's case will be closed and family members will be evaluated for Medicaid. The participant may reapply for Work First benefits after the ineligibility period ends. Remember, if you're thinking about quitting your job, please contact your employment social worker before doing so. The maximum Work First benefits check per month for a family with no income is as follows. $236 for a family of two, $272 for a family of three, and $297 for a family of four. If employed, receiving the hourly minimum wage of $7.25, the monthly income is $1,247 for full-time employment. Finally, if you decide not to apply for Work First Family Assistance, there may be other programs for which you are eligible, such as Food and Nutrition Services and Medicaid. Please don't hesitate and ask for more information. I wish you good luck. Raising a family is a big responsibility, and we want to help you. Putting work and family first is the first step to success.